Well, I can actually say that I've never, never seen them before. I've never experienced anything quite like it before. A close encounter of the second kind in the great sandy desert. Just another UFO story, not this one. Well, I've seen things that uh, shouldn't be in where, where they are, you know. Mm. Uh, but never anything like this? No. no. Never actually like that, you know. Not at all. Four separate sightings over a four-hour period. The first at Lake Gregory, the last at Wolf Creek Crater. Check the map. They're both in the middle of nowhere. What was your reaction when you saw the lights for the first time? It's a funny sensation. You, you, know, you feel the hairs in your legs sort of curling and your heart's beating at about a million things per second and your arms and legs sort of don't want to move. So, um, what was it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. From the first sighting near Lake Gregory, Monty, Wayne and Brett travelled 40 kilometres down the track. They pulled up on the side of the road for a bite to eat. That's when the object appeared yet again, long enough for photographs to be taken. Photographs which have already been proved legitimate. The clearest shot shows the object to be pale blue in colour. It was a cloudy sky with no moon. Both men say the thing had definite shape and form. Over the sizzling snaggers, Monty continues. And, uh, next thing, this thing's there again. Well, that's one of what the, fire, the shot of the of the, uh, of the truck, you know. And, uh, well, there was this rumbling noise, just sound like a car at a high speed coming over corrugation, you know. And uh, it was, there was no cars. And then we stepped back in the fire, and then this thing was sitting there. Virtually right on top of you? Yeah, on the truck. By day, Monty runs a taxi service around Kununurra. He's well known in the area and cares little for outsiders' opinions. What about the people who say they're just a couple of guys who have lived in the bush too long? I guess you've had a few of them too. <laughs> yeah, the old, that's the old story, isn't it, you know? Been out in the scrub too long, yeah. You don't go with that one, of course. No. The Kimberley Echo was the first paper to print the photos. James O'Kenny, who runs the Torrid tabloid, is also well known in these parts. A straight shooter? You betcha. Some of which I discount. Would there be any reason to doubt what Monty and Wayne are saying? Well, I'm always a bit sus being in the same game as you being in the media business, but um, you know, I made it very plain to them. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm involved with them. They do a lot of work for me and otherwise. And I said, if you make a fool of me, look out. The third member of the trio, Brett Rogers, was so shaken he refused to leave the truck while the object hovered overhead. But it wasn't just the sight and sound that made the skin crawl. The, the funny part about it was, from when we had tea until the last time we'd seen it, we started off again. We had no uh, two-way contact, nothing. Like if we were blaming one another's two-way for breaking down, you know. It, it, it was virtually on the ground at the first, first sighting. And uh, it was there until Monty took that last, last photograph. And, uh, and, and then it appeared to move off. And Monty got back in the truck and said to me on the, on the radio, he said, what happened to the lights? They've gone out. And from the photograph, um, that last photograph he took, the actual thing was actually off the ground. I can't even say what I saw. And, and, it, was, and it was unusual. It was huge. And, um, and uh, I can't explain it. It's as simple as that. Monty, Wayne and Brett saw something on the night of March the 5th. What it was remains a mystery. It'll probably stay that way forever. The skeptics will write it off. The fanatics will write it down in the record books. Either Peter Chapman says his bus was buzzed and then followed by a glowing sphere at Mundrabilla on the same stretch of road where the Knowles family reported being picked up by a UFO earlier this year. Peter Chapman and his passengers are convinced they saw something from another planet.
Ironically, the trip to Perth began with a viewing of the movie Gremlins. Just after midnight Monday morning, the Ansett Pioneer bus was taking 25 passengers between Mundrabilla and Madura when a bright light with another small light circling it confronted the vehicle and then followed the bus for eight kilometres. It seemed to just hover there for a couple of seconds and I went past it. And uh, I looked in the rear vision mirror and it came in behind the bus and then it stayed around about a kilometre behind me. And Peter Chapman me kept driving but alerted five other passengers who were awake. They were stunned and frightened as the glowing three metre sphere chased them. In January this year, the Knowles family from Perth claimed their car was buzzed and then lifted into the air by a similar object. Peter Chapman laughed off their claims, but Monday morning's experience has changed his mind. In four years of driving this road, he's seen nothing like it. And I didn't believe it in it at all, that UFO stuff, but I do now. It's totally different. Unfortunately, no passenger could find a camera aboard to capture these few moments on film.